Iris was in the process of replying to what he said, and then she now heard the wail of a siren. That's the hound siren. She only had three minutes. She, so, in the process of trying to tell him that, you know, she has to go, things like that, she made three typos. She, she never makes typos. She was like, I have that to go. Sorry, like with two Ys. And then more later, the later is a W, like L A T W R, sort of L A T E R. And then she covered the window, blew out the light. She ran to Marisol's room, you know, met, um, I think in the hallway. They all, the boat went there. All of them were, she was shaking. She tripped on rock and, you know, and they blocked the door of Marisol's room with the heaviest furniture. And then suddenly the siren stopped. There was such a stillness in the night. Marisol had a loaded gun and everybody was just ready. Next thing they had the sirens be, you know, beneath the window at the ground floor, scratching at the door, scratching at the door, shaking the house as if, it was, as if it would shake it out of its foundation. It left. They left. They returned. It was like a loop and it continued all night long. So r- meanwhile, Roman was imagining the was What's going on? Like, why is she not replying? What's going on? They did start, but they start bumping there. Is she hiding somewhere? Is she hot? He now read her letters. You know, he was aching for her, things like that. So he couldn't sleep. He went to the kitchen, met his nan there. And then his nan was like, what are you up doing? He's like, I'm waiting for a letter. She was like, a letter in the dead of the night. He's like, yes. And then she beamed. And it's rare for her to smile. She's someone who rarely smiles. She was now like, good, you're finally putting my typewriter to good use. You must be writing to Daisy Wino's granddaughter. So, and because both Daisy and his grandma, Roman's grandma, they both chose to keep their typewriters in the family instead of donating it to the museum. Okay? So Nan's family, they are upper class nobs. Like Roman's family, they are, they are upper class nobs built on new money. And Ali Web 2 is rich. So Roman doesn't understand how both of them had a friend who doesn't have money. Roman's grandma was like, her and Aliwet didn't care about Daisy's status. They just liked her as a person. She was a dreamer, innovative and open hearted. So Nan now told Roman the story of their connected typewriters, how it happened. And then she now asked, So what kind of person is um Daisy's granddaughter? So Roman is like, based on what you said about your friend, I think Iris is like her grandma. So Nan was like, Don't let her slip away that sort of thing that she's 75 years old she can tell that the world is about to get darker and at such a time like this you need to hold on to good stuff so by morning Roman got a letter from Iris that she was fine so later that day she was gardening with Marisol and you know with Marisol and um, at the the garden was a mess a big mess and there was gorges on the claw marks like on the floor on the soil and it was like Ugh, so creepy so Marisol was like it used to be her wife who used to um, take care of the garden. And her wife travel- travels a lot. So, obviously, you can't hear her wife. So, this is a lesbian relationship. But they didn't delve into it. So, anyhow. So, anyhow, how the name of um, Marisol's wife is Keegan. Because Marisol wears his wedding band. You get. So, she had come to the B&B. And then she had kind of said something about the garden that it's not kept well. And Marisol had been angry. And then Keegan felt bad and helped with the garden, made it really good. She traveled, but came back. And they got married, things like that. But then Iris was now thinking, for the garden to be in the States, it means that Keegan went somewhere and hasn't been back for a long time. Because the garden is in too much disarray. That means it has missed Keegan's touch severely. So that night... Iris and her nameless boy flattered. And he started with Iris asking, would you ever want to meet me? So he replied, yes, but, but you're far away. And she's like, I want to see you. I want to hear your voice. In the back of her mind, she said, I want to touch you. But she didn't write that part. So he was like, he wants the same. Along with other things they'll do together. If she was back in old, they'll visit the library, scarf for mom meds. They would meet um, his grandma, things like that. Just sweet things basically. So later the next day, Iris received received letter confirming that her brother enlisted in the army. But then that's the only information they had. For her to get more information to her, she had to write to a certain brigade person. And she was warned though that the mail running is not reliable. So Iris just said, okay, she searched the route to that brigade person. 
So later she was working on the articles now, the articles that are paying her money to be there for at the front line. But it was a struggle. And then she, on her table, she had this jar that contained her mom's ashes. She hadn't spread it yet because she didn't know where to spread it. So Athi too was kind of having struggling with her articles. Both of them decided to go on and work. And um, on their work, Ati was like, I think Marisol isn't telling us something. Not like she's keeping something bad from us, but not telling us something because she's trying to protect us. So later, Aris was like, Ati, what do you think about love at first sight? Do you think it's possible? So with every exposure that they're getting because of the war, how how um, swift and short life can be, I feel like these days I think anything is possible, y'all. Okay, these are not stable times. You're not really looking so much to the future as you're looking at to be happy and to have light to hold on to at the present moment. Yes, that's how it is. So that night, Iris sent a note to her nameless man. So she listed eight things she knew about him. She was like, here are the things I think I knew about you. One, you slouch sometimes. Two, you have your father's chin. Three, you have perfect hair, somewhere between rogue and knight errant. Four, you have a nan who's full of meds. Five, you're Dell's older brother. Six, you live in oats. Seven, you're 19. I added up from your previous letter. You can guess which one. And then eight, you have impeccable writing. And then she now said, things I don't know about you. One, your name. He, he, he now replied that his name is Carver. And his sister, Del, used to call him that. So her reply, that's when she introduced herself. Because remember, she thinks she does not know this person. So that's why he even gave her his middle name, Kava. That's it. She's always teasing him about. Yes? So she now introduced herself to her and said, my name is Iris. Then he was like, oh, now I guess why, um, you know, you refer that your brother calls you Little Flower. Because, you know, her first letters now, she thought she was writing to her, her brother. And she used to sign her letters, Little Flower. He was like, oh, that's where Little Flower comes from. <laughs> As though he does not know. Okay, so um, the next day, it's another dark day, <laughs> you know, war times and all. So Laurie came into Avalon Bluff, the infirmary with wounded soldiers. There was a female soldier that um, Iris helped down. She even vomited seeing the injuries in the soldiers, many things. The female soldier, like her stomach was kind of cut open, you know, in textiles and things like that. See, I cannot describe this thing because me too, Zimmy is in my body. But we can just get the fact that I am not a war person, so I will not be doing stories about war. Next time before I pick up a novel, I'm going to look online and see what it's about. I'm not going to, I, I'm telling you, but let's finish the story, okay? So, Iris was trying to signal a nurse, hey, this person needs you, this person needs you. The, the nurse was haggard, you know, so many people to attend to. She now told her that, see, I can't help her. You know, that, that's not someone I can help. Just try to keep her comfortable until she dies. So that's basically many of the soldiers they're bringing into the infirmary. Many of them don't even make it because they're in such a bad way that the doctor can't do anything. But then they just have to be brought there so that they can die, find a way to die peacefully. Please ignore the noise and the chattering pots in the background. Because the people I live with in this house say that I'm not going to shine. But I will shine, okay? <laughs> Actually, I borrowed that last part from somebody. I heard my friend say that on one of her videos, and it was funny. Okay, let's continue with the story. So Marisol, Iris, Ate, they donated their feather-stuffed pallets, you know, their beds for wounded soldiers. They literally dragged all the beds in the B&B &B and brought it to the infirmary for the soldiers. That's, that's really, that's sacrificial. <laughs> okay so all that was left is bed frames and quilts at the house then a middle-aged man dressed in threadbare officer's uniform was there he was talking to a doctor so he's a captain and then when he saw that arty and um, iris are war correspondents now with the news correspondents for the war and things like that he wanted to take one of them to the front line so the two girls they flipped a coin so arty ended up going Back at Oats, Roman and Elino, the girl that he's supposed to marry, they had lunch. I mean, it was so cold. Elino actually has someone she loves, but she can't be with the person. She has to be her father. So Roman was asking, so what is that, that thing that both of you build? And you people are building bombs. And she's like, they're not bombs. But you find out when we get married and things like that, what those things are. So after the dinner, like after the lunch she had with the girl that was so cold, did not make him any assured that he and this girl would even walk out or become friends because she's distant and things like that. So after that lunch, he saw people gathered around a newspaper stand and it was, he just had to draw clothes. It was by the Incredian Tribune and the cover, like 
the, the, the cover article was written by Iris. Her article name is Incred and Iris, The Unexpected Face of War by Incred and Iris. He bought a paper. You know, he's not supposed to, in that he's working for the competitor and things like that. But he bought a paper. He went to a street corner. He read everything. He was so proud of her. She was writing brave both things. He desired the same. So back now at Avalon Bluff, they buried dead soldiers, cleaned up blood, really sorrowful. Marisol now confessed because actually Iris asked, you know, it's just Iris and Marisol left at these at the front lines. So Iris now asked Marisol that is there something you're not telling us? That's how Marisol ended up confessing that her wife, Kagan, was fighting in the war. And the reason that she didn't say so is because I know that you were correspondents are meant to be writing from a neutral perspective. I didn't want to get in the way of that. So that's when Iris was like, that doesn't make that actually Helena would still send us to you because she knows my brother like Iris now. Her brother Forrest is fighting the war and she still sends her head as a war correspondent. That's to tell you that the whole neutral thing is not entirely neutral, but eh, okay. Iris asks, how long has Kagan been gone for? Kagan has been gone for seven months. That night, Iris now wrote to Kava because now she has a name. You know, no longer nameless boy, Kava. That it's really hard writing about the war, being here. She feels inadequate. He encouraged her to keep at it. That you have the words. It's inside of you. Just keep it. Keep at it. Then Athi, you know, the next day or so, Athi returned from the front line. She was withdrawn. It was night and Athi was on the roof of the roof connecting her window to the outside. And then she was admiring the stars with binoculars. So she, they traded secrets, the girls, Athi and Iris. Iris told her that actually she has this boy, Kava, she's been writing to. They have connected typewriters and she thinks she's in love with him. So that's when Athi understood why Iris asked her about first love stuff. Then Athi now told um, Iris that she used to play violins. Actually, she comes from a musical family. They play the piano, the violin, many stringed instruments. And but because Enver uses stringed instruments, it happened now. So when the war broke out, because of Enver's music, they banned music in oats that nobody should be using all those things. So because of that reason, the constable came, seized all the instruments in most people's houses. But her dad knew how much she loved music, so he had kept um one for her, like a um a violin for her, hid it in the wall compartment. So she played it in the basement at the day when nobody. The street is alive and nobody can hear. Not even her siblings knew she had it. So that's her own secret. Artie's secret. And the thing is, Arthur used to be so angry about Enver the war and the war. Like, why would Enver recruit people and send them off to war? All those things. Like, what was what was up with that? Why is this even happening? But after she went to the front wall, to the front lines, the front front main front lines and returned, like Arthur. She, she's no longer angry with Enver because she knew she now knows that without Enver's involvement, Dark Ray would reign. He would win without a fight. That, and she knows that actually more people are needed for them to have a chance to win this war. And Afi was also sad. There was no music to show people at Oath what is happening, why this war is happening and that they need help. That's when Iris held her hand and said, but we have our pens. We can show them what we write about the war. So... By making a difference in this way. Kava sent the myth about Enver's hap to Iris. Apparently, Enver's hap is the only one of its kind. It's first born in the clouds. It has a frame of dragon burn, strings of hair stolen from the fiercest happies in the skies. I don't know what happies are, but I'm going to confirm by the next time we'll see. And then it has a frame held together by wind. Okay? So this... Enver's hap is heavy to mortals. Like if mortal, a mortal person were to carry it. And actually it's only heaven that can truly make it sink. So that in that same letter, Kava now told um Iris that he's going far away. You know, he's going away from Oat, but he's going to write her when he can. Iris sent letters, where are you going to? Things like that. But she knows that obviously he's no longer home to answer her letters. So she's just like, okay, I just have to wait for him to get in touch. It's hard, but I have to wait for him to get in touch. So the next day, Iris and Artie, they are planting seeds in the garden. And then they now hear the siren for air trails. You get now, like that continuous siren during the daytime. The one at night is for the hounds, three minutes. So they had two minutes before the air trails arrive. At this time, Marisol was at the infirmary. So, but she had given instructions, you know, in case such a thing occurs, Athi, um, Iris's way as to do, cover the ground floor windows 
will sit still things like that but then as iris went upstairs to cover because as it was covering the ground floor windows iris was now covering the the windows that are upstairs do you get so as iris was covering the windows that's when she now saw someone through her window walking on the golden field toward avalon bluff like the person was somehow close but not that close she can't see who it is but she can just see somebody walking when the person is supposed to be lying down on the floor she now has to go and grab a binocular to see who the person is she now saw that is a war correspondent and the person is none other than roman confounded kids yes today the c for her sounds for confounded so she was like oh my god his ignorance would draw a bomb but obviously her heart also left like oh my god what is roman doing here i can't even imagine him dead i don't want him dead so she now started racing ah race left over stone wall that street neighbor's yard and then she was not close enough for him to see her that's when she now he now drops his load because he was carrying his typewriter case and under back and then he, he dropped it he now started running towards her so when he was when they were now when they now kind of almost collided she now pulled him down and now laid on his body this kind of thing they now tumbled through the grass before they lay still his hand was now on her back and she was like don't move whatever i do don't move next thing the eight trials came you, you can't you can just feel when they come because the weather all around changes feels like shadows cold air screeches like nails on chalkboard do you understand so they were just lying there held their breath the atrials they flew they flew you know and then before they now started going away as they now cleared you can literally feel the shadows flee the air warm lights brighten you know the wind is returning so and it's an intimate position that these two are lying in. Do you get that kind of thing? Her hair is across his mouth. You know, she's sweating and it's dripping on his neck. Yet he lays still. And she's all she's feeling butterflies in her stomach. And at the same time, she's also she now remembered Kava. You know, the guy she's like writing letters to. She now feels guilty. Look at me. You know, feel have feeling butterflies for Roman when there is Kava. You know? So next thing that she sat up, she now asked him, What the hell are you doing here, Kit? And then this his hand slid from her back because it was on her back now before he now slid to her hips and she was thinking i should knock his hands off or i should slap him or i should kiss him but what am i not why am i not doing anything he now smiled at her and now said it's good to see you again too we know and this is where part b ends and we'll find we'll we'll finish part c tomorrow so please hang around for that i really tried to shorten this story but this is not easy to do this career part of chosen but it's really fun sometimes it's not because i think i spoke really fast today but I hope you got this and um, see you tomorrow. Bye.